Castle in the Sky, the first Studio Ghibli film officially. Obviously, Nausicaa, which led to Studio Ghibli, but this was the first one. Beautiful movie. We're going to talk about it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ads Art with Nick, John, and our expert Kyle. So the first official Studio Ghibli film, my first viewing. How many times have you guys seen this, Nick and Kyle? 87. No. No, this um, is Kyle's wow. first time. It's my this first is time. Kyle's first time. Oh, oh, cool, cool. I didn't know that too. Oh, and cool. This, this will be really like fun. this is like my third or fourth. For sure. So is this saying that, now he's still an expert, even though it's his first viewing then, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> because I approach with... everything with an expert <laughs> intent. <laughs> Ah, oh, I like this. All right, By the good. way, guys, so, we've been going through the whole Miyazaki series all the way from Spirit Away to Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, and now Castle in the Sky. Oh, my gosh. So, John, this is your first viewing. Go. Yeah. What, what What were your major impressions? You know, it's funny. The last couple ones we've been watching. So, before this, it was Howl's Moving Castle was the last one. No, Nausicaa, no, Nausicaa. Valley of the Wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, the last couple movies, I mean, like, you know, this is going to be the first one. It's going to be, this is the first one I didn't like. And that's a compliment because it starts off and you know what? This is not going to catch me. And by the end, it's like, he got me again. This was good, (laughs) you know? And so it's the world building and the characters along the way. And this one, I heard you guys when I was just jumping onto the call before we started, uh, I think you guys were talking about world building and there was Mm -hmm. quite a bit of in this one. Like I, it wasn't, some of the other ones, it felt more like it was just about characters. This one, I, I got a good w- feel for the world, but I, I, I liked it. Like I, I, you had asked me before we started, did you like it more than some of the other ones? It's like, oh, I mean, it's it's in familiar company. Like mm-hmm. I'm getting a little bit more used to Miyazaki now, and I kind of know what type of trademarks there are, but mm-hmm. I completely enjoyed it. And so I'm super excited to hear about Kyle. Like this is your first time too, because yeah. all the ones up to this point, you guys have both yeah. seen multiple times, right? Yeah, I so I really liked it actually. Um, it, it and I was t- and as I was telling Nick earlier, it's not I don't like it as much as I think. You know, it's not like up there, up there, but it's definitely a solid what I consider Miyazaki film, right? Like, um, uh, I would say though that this was the first one that made me realize like that oh, there's actual like themes that Miyazaki uses over and over again and tells them differently throughout his, his movies. Right. Um, and I, and I have some of those, but like, um, yeah, like, I mean, so, you know, one is of course there is a short sighted militaristic and dare I say imperialistic government, Mm -hmm. right. Uh, Uh, they're, um, women as domestic engineers. We Mm -hmm. have the scene where she gets into the kitchen, right. You know, that's been (laughs) popping up here and there. Um, and then, uh, technology as an agent of destruction, Mm. okay um, lot, and then yeah, um, sure. a disconnection and then a reconnection with nature yes. right so mm-hmm. like with the ethereum and how humans once knew how to mine it and stuff and like that equals like humanity's falling out of harmony with nature right mm. and then we have like the people of laputa were not like grounded per se because they were always in the clouds in, in that castle right and so uh, in the past so they or so hence they were um, in the clouds and not in tune with the world by like not being a part of the earth as well Right. Mm. And then finally, you have the continual world, which I've mentioned before, um, and that the sense that um, the, the world has a life beyond the credits. Right. And we yes. kind of get that at the end credits again, where we kind of it's still just almost like a still image with the castle floating there or what remains of the castle. But we get the day and night cycle kind of slowly going through the credits. Right. And you kind of say, aha, yes, this world is still alive and the world still turns. Right. So, yes. yeah, really cool. The world is still alive, too, because. Did you guys notice the little creatures that were hanging around those yeah. iron giants? Yep. The iron Straight out giants. of Nausicaa. <laughs> Dude, Straight Nausicaa, out of Nausicaa, right? So what if this is like a prequel to Nausicaa, like before the seven days of fire? And it's like the start. I was like, oh, dude, is this the guy making connections here? Come on, Miyazaki, do it, do it. I, I want to like, believe. I want to believe. <laughs> because because in Nick Nick's mind, every movie, every series, Not every different movie. Direct, doesn't matter. Nope. Everything <laughs> has a connection. Well, it's just we've never. This is this is the only two times you're actually going to see that creature. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, really? Oh, okay, yeah. the only two times. I wonder. Yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if that was like a team connection. Like it's kind of like people who worked on the same kind of. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're like, we need an animal. Oh, we already have the model sheets for this character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Kyle, you play Minecraft. Did you see the Minecraft connection? Uh, I didn't until you told me about it, and then I I, I looked it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get it now. I get it. 
you, know, you want to explain to everyone now that you know Minecraft connection. I, uh, well, I mean, I know, I know the surface level of it. Basically, like, I guess there's some really cool Minecraft builds that are like castle that have no, like the castle in the sky. The iron golems, dude. Oh, the iron. Go- oh my god. <laughs> Oh yeah, that yeah. Okay, go ahead now. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the thing about the iron, so the iron golems in Minecraft um, is like they're kind of a direct reference to the film in that also like when you like kill them, unfortunately, uh, they will drop uh, a little metal ingot and a flower, right? Which is you know like with man, and I'm like, oh, that's that's cute, you know. And I guess I guess the team, you know, had that in mind when they did that, right? Which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, this is so cool. I just, I always yeah. love that reference. I was like, Kyle, how have you played Minecraft all this time and not watched this movie? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> one of those little details, you know? And then, um, okay, so let's just talk about some quick things here. We're going to go deep on the podcast, really talk about some major themes and like different character arcs and stuff like that. But one thing, this reminded me of like a Indiana you know jones movie right like an action movie you got like the 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 mine cart you got the villains that are like world war ii era like oh we need the power yeah. to like take over and i'm like i'm getting those vibes from this movie and i was like did this come out before yeah. i'm like no this came out after so i was like oh this could have been slightly influenced like even with the whole mine cart scene being chased and mm. the, i'm like i'm kind of getting those like vibes in the ancient you know stone it yeah. awakens something obviously it's not like at all but i'm kind of yeah. getting like yeah a little bit of like of those story beats yeah i like um i agree with you with the uh, indiana jones stuff i also would say that i got a little bit of tin tin vibes yeah just because we have patsu a 13 year old boy holding a handgun right yeah and, and, right. and tin tin we you know tin tin he he'd always have a pistol or something right <laughs> you know what and he's i'm a just kid. gonna ask you guys were you guys cool with a 13 year old using a gun i'm just yeah i'm just i was cool with it cool I'm with like, the cool, all right okay cool yeah. now were you guys cool with a 13 year old being proposed to by a pirate yeah that was pretty cringe <laughs> that was pretty creepy right it was pretty it was pretty creepy <laughs> okay. like like i mean like and and that's the thing all of them tried to you know woo her in some capacity i'm like i i stopped the movie i paused it and i'm like how old is she to supposed to be, right? And I'm like, 13 years old. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, some of my favorite characters, though, were the, the mom, the old mom, reminded me of Ma Fatelli and the Goonies. She's like, yeah. Yep. Like, Do- hold on to your hats and yeah, like. Dola? Do- Dola? What's Captain her name? Dola. Yeah. Dola. Dola. She was hilarious, but she's like, oh, she reminds me of like, find a good girl. She'll turn Great out like this. acting like, for her, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. Like, when she's, she's like gonna, eating meat and talking to. Like, oh, yeah. She's <laughs> like, amazing. But, but then all, all of a sudden, goes, she's going to look like our mom. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just, just like the, the, their conversations and all the scenes are making me laugh so hard. It's like, oh, yeah. man. You, uh, those, those are my favorite characters. You're talking, <laughs> you talking about the Goonies connection. I. It's great you you got to to uh, what was her name Ma 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 Fatelli Ma yeah. Fatelli yeah Fatelli's so it. like I got the connection of Ducktales with the Ooh. Beagle Boys right Ma Beagle yeah, yeah, you know, oh, yeah I, like I was that. like oh I like that. this is so cool yeah that's, oh, like, funny. that's awesome. And, you know, okay, so there, now that we're t- kind of talking about this, there were some funny story beats. Like, it really didn't help the story, and it wasn't necessary, but it was, like, amazing. Like, when he's like, can I see your necklace? And he grabs the necklace, and he just jumps off the roof of his house. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like wait, who, who does this? Who <laughs> just, like, yeah. grabs something? And it wasn't a big deal that he broke all this stuff. Oh, no, the water's going to boil over or whatever. Like, the kettle is like, I, I feel like your priorities might be off, but, you know, go ahead, I guess. <laughs> And then that's the true. Other, the other moment, which was just amazing, was the the brawl in the street. Like there was no reason yes. for the pirates to like do a like a freaking punch off in the street. Yeah. It was I, so I amazing. thought the flex scene. I laughed out loud with you. Watch, make your what do you say? Like make your shirt explode. Like that's what they literally said. Make your shirt explode. He went, hey, kadoosh. And then the other guy went, hey, kadoosh, kadoosh, kadoosh. I just started laughing so hard. Like, I thought that. Super and then, then the wife is like. I'm not fixing that. He's like, uh, it's like, yeah. that was, that stuff was hilarious. I really thought that, that was so stuff awesome, was funny. Wasn't yeah. It? Oh, it was so awesome. No, that was like, yeah. yeah like I was just like, and, it, and you know, it's interesting. They were, I think both of them were smiling, right? It's kind of yeah, like, it's kind of like, like that, that like very machismo, it, yeah. just like, yeah, we're yeah, going to have yeah. a tussle, a good old fashioned tussle. You know? like, <laughs> tussle. It was funny. It was fun. It was really, really fun. I enjoyed that. Like then that, that, that really goes back to, 
this one again like you guys have talked about before had great world building but the characters you really get a great sense of who each person is by the end of the movie and you really got that a lot in this as well but you got a much better sense for the world as a whole in this one versus the other ones kind of like you guys are saying it's just it was more character building whereas this one was was both in the world guys i I also just got to say this so Hmm. the part where uh the scruffy girl chasing out a piglet out of the door of their house before she realizes pots are running that was like a huge vibe like i'm just like whoa like this is i don't know what what that that cemented the world more for me than anything else like <laughs> i'm just like what is that is so cute and adorable and just what the hell man <laughs> and then of course we should just mention here cuz we'll talk about it more on the podcast but the villain Muska, General Muska. I yes. Mean, how General great, Hamill. Yes. How great was that character? I believe he was a colonel. But, oh, colonel. Sorry. Yes, but, colonel. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. But like, how great was that character as a villain? He was pretty good. I love the was, voice. Oh, I no. You're talking about the actual. Oh, I thought you were talking about our our. Our Mark uh, undercover Mark Hamill. Are you talking about the, the general, like the military well, see, guy? I, I messed or it up. It's, it's the Colonel okay. Mushka. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh-huh. that's that's yeah. what I meant. Mark Mark Hamill. That's who I was Mark trying Hamill, to get to. Yes. But yes. How great was that character and the voice acting and how much it added to that character? Yeah. It was. I. Yeah. Sorry, you. Were I actually had a little bit. No, I was say I actually had a little bit of a hard time because once I heard it was Mark Hamill, mm-hmm. I kept thinking, "Hee hee, it's Mark Hamill." Like I I couldn't like not pay attention to the kid. Like it's Mark Hamill. Like I was just I don't know. I it was dumb of me, but I, I it was one of those things where it's like you know you see Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie or you see. But like we watched Blues Brothers the other night. I was like, oh, it's Carrie. It's Princess Leia. But she's playing, you know, what's his name's, you know, ex, you know, girlfriend or whatever. It's like I have a hard time not seeing those people for who they played previously. So anyway, it was a little bit hard for me to. But he played a great part voice wise. Yeah, it was great. What are you going to say, Kyle? No, I just noticed that um, it at first I was a little disconnected with his voice performance because it changed actually throughout the film. Mm. Uh, But then I realized I'm like, well, actually. It does make a lot of sense. So at the beginning, he's he's a bit more reserved, right? Mm-hmm. He's definitely like the agent, right? That yeah. came from the the capital, right? Um, and but then as he gets, I notice as he gets closer and closer to his the object of his desire, right? The power that um, that the castle in the sky has, he gets more and more manic, mm-hmm. right? And more like you know possessed Losing by power, his patience too. Huh? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, that that makes sense, you know. He got he got he he got more more Joker. As it, as, oh yeah, as it definitely got more yes. Joker. Yeah. But do you think that was? Do you think that was voice acting and the script, or do you think that was Mark Hamill just doing cues? It might have even from... been before the Joker. Yes, it was because I I believe I the think... animated series was 1990. Yeah. No, that's, that's what true. I mean. I mean, do you think do you think that was Miyazaki built into the existing script and movie, or do you think that was Mark Hamill making Mark character Hamill choices? I feel like it was Mark so? Hamill because it was like Disney doing it. Mm. But I don't yeah. know. Honestly. I like to think both. You know, <laughs> that's the Why same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. No matter what, right? <laughs> yep. The middle road, McGill. That's what they call me. And then the last topic we'll talk about here before we jump over to the podcast. Were you guys a fan of the aircrafts in this movie? Yes. Anything that stood wanna, out was just, just yes. Like, did you did you like okay, the whole actually, like, you know glider what I... attachment and how you can steer a glider through a hurricane, which just seems impossible? Like, yeah, it's pretty nuts. Let's just totally talk about this. Well, well, okay. So, so here's the thing that we saw once and we never saw again: flying islands. Mm. So, in the opening credits, there uh-huh. are chunks of Earth or like just massive chunks of like land mass that are floating in the sky and are being directed or propelled by some sort of mechanism, right? Mm. We don't we see that in the opening credits, never see it again, and I was mm. kind of disappointed to be honest. It's because like, I um, was getting so any of you people who used to uh rock the Dreamcast mm-hmm. RPGs, um uh skies wow. I was getting mad skies of Arcadia vibes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um and then um yeah, we're going to well, you know what? There was a couple great camera work shots in this movie in with the action shots. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. one of the one that always sticks out to me too is when he's riding on the back of the of the pirates uh, thing um and they like zoom into his face when the when they're mm-hmm. flying to them and mm-hmm. I was just like mm-hmm. that's incredible cuz it's everything's hand drawn in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like cuz mm-hmm. of 
there's like close to 70,000 you know frames or drawings in this movie which is just incredible you know i i mean obviously he does more and more when he goes mm-hmm. on and he does bigger productions and princess mononoke is just huge and crazy but like for his second movie no well his third movie but like this is incredible the amount of work that that goes into these movies and i'm always just so impressed by the quality and I'm always every time we watch one of these movies, I'm always blown away. I just check the you know the length when it starts. I'm like, man, this is a over two hour animated film. Like again, you don't get those a whole lot. You know, even when two D animated films are in their heyday, they usually you know what hour and a half, you know, ninety minutes, something like that. They they didn't tend to run over that you know yeah. to that length of period of time so i was like yeah that's a lot of frames like you're saying and there's a lot of stuff going like at the very beginning when she floats down from the sky and he catches her and then he's what and she gets heavy he's like oh, oh you know yeah. doing so all good. of like so good up and then and then when he was walking off like a little, little, little plank of wood i was so curious i'm like is it is the plank gonna recoil and then it did it did you know it's like yeah. all those little details it's not just all the frames but all the details in those frames like yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on there yeah he yeah. almost dropped her twice right he almost dropped her right there and then like they were so excited when they landed they're like twirling and almost like fell yeah i was like right? yeah. and end credits yeah and roll, roll wait credits. don't you have the thing around your neck no he took it remember Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so we're gonna head over to the podcast now we're gonna talk more about themes and music and who's the who's the main character in this too you know what i mean i feel like it's almost split we're gonna have a great discussion on the podcast so join us on either apple spotify or e- we're even on audible now too all right guys so like nick said go ahead and we will continue this conversation on the podcast check out Kyle's Instagram, Pecos with a zero. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you on the next As Arch. Let me know and say hi. <laughs> <laughs>